I'm Jacob. I'm Yuri. And we're going for a drive. 2021 Porsche 911 Turbo S. With launch control. Oh my. <laughs> oh God. Horsepower torque, 641 horsepower, 590 pound-feet of torque from a 3.8 liter twin turbo flat six. The competition for the 911 turbo is the AMG GTR, the Lamborghini Huracan Evo, the Audi R8, the Nissan GTR. That's pretty much it. F-Type SVR? Yeah, kind of. Okay, so let's address the horsepower because this is the Turbo S. That was straight up the craziest launch we've ever had and probably will have for a very long time. Zero to 100 kilometers per hour in 2.7 seconds. To be honest, the closest thing to that, I think, is the Nissan GTR for me. Real? No. Uh, that solo. Feeling that, wise. The solo one I did, yeah. Feeling wise. I think this is the craziest launch I've ever experienced and the closest for me would be the Lamborghini Huracan or maybe even a Tesla. Like, the launch is insane. Or maybe, like the Taycan Turbo S? Okay, the launch was good, but what about the flooring it? Holy. Okay, this just pulls so hard. There's like half a second of where the boost builds because there's so much boost that needs to build, and then you're just gone. It's like you're getting kicked in the back constantly. This, this feels like a rocket ship. It really does. Like, this is insane. You know when like an astronaut goes to space? They don't have to steer the rocket ship. Well, what I imagine happens yeah. in space. I'm, I'm sure they don't have a steering wheel on that. This is like a rocket ship to space that you have to steer yourself. It really is. And speaking of steering, let's steer myself through Cliche Corner in Sport Plus mode. And downshift and wow. Okay, tiny bit of understeer and then oversteer, but holy crap, that power. So basically the back end just pulls you right through and it is all-wheel drive hence why we're getting such good launches and why we have so much grip because a lot of other fast cars like even the gt2 rs has a really good zero to 60 time but you can barely ever get it to fully grip on a launch exactly and then the other thing is you're never nervous driving this like any rear wheel drive car with 600 plus horsepower is a little sketchy at times this no sketchiness whatsoever. No, it feels so dialed. You could pretty much throw anyone into this. Well, except for probably a handful of people, but most people would probably be very comfortable flooring it. They'd probably get a little scared and let off, but they wouldn't be that scared. And this is the 911 Turbo S for the 992 generation. There is no GT cars for this generation yet. And there's actually no turbo for this yet. The Turbo S came out before the turbo. But every Porsche 911 is turbo. Yes. But well, Turbo is the branding for the fastest one. Hence the Taycan being called a Turbo and it doesn't have a Turbo. But image-wise, in my head, I think I feel like the Turbo cars are below the GT cars. Well, they kind of are, but this is the top, like this is the top dog because it's the most GT, it's the most luxurious, but I know what you're saying. Yeah, I guess we'll get into that more later. Yes. But let's get into the specifics of the transmission and how this thing handles. So this is an eight-speed PDK, shifts like lightning. I feel like the new Lambos shift a little bit faster than this, but I still have no complaints about this. I just feel wise, those ones hit a little bit harder. You know, like hitting different on Fridays kind of thing. <laughs> Everything about those hit a little harder because this is like, a sleeper car. Yeah, and the crazy part is this transmission is actually unique to the Turbo and the Turbo S because it needs to handle all that torque. And the crazy part about the power delivery is you get full torque at 2500 RPM. So you have peak boost straight away from 2500. It's like just a little bit above idle basically. So yeah. if you floor it, it's just it just goes. It kicks in right away, but the red line is a lot lower than like the naturally aspirated GT3 that we love so much. Obviously. So now I'm going to floor it from 3000 and we'll see what happens gone holy shit. <laughs> it does take an instant to kick in but it's like really fast and if you were actually like racing around you'd always be in the right area for boost yeah if you were using this on a track you wouldn't feel any of the lag it's when you're down a gear or up a gear <laughs> and the craziest part about this generation of turbo s is that we have 60 more horsepower than the previous generation which is the biggest jump it's ever had in its history and to put this speed into perspective, do you remember from Fast and Furious, he said, hey, you owe me a 10 second car? Yep. This does the quarter mile in 10.5 seconds. This is, hey, you owe me a 10 second car. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So then since this is a Turbo S, we do have a huge wing at the back, which helps with aero and everything. And then at the front, 
we also have some cool aero stuff. Yeah, so the front splitter actually changes, it morphs. This is the first time we've seen anything like this and it's so cool. At first I'm like, okay, this is cool, it's rubberized, so if you hit a curb or whatever, it's not that bad. But then when you click the spoiler up button, it folds out and then like when you put it down, it'll like tuck right in. It's such a cool process. Yeah, so it's not like a cheap kind of moving part. It's like the whole thing is textured and rubberized and the whole thing molds. And speaking about that aero and kind of handling stuff, this does have rear wheel steering, which is standard. So obviously this thing handles incredibly well. I touched on that little bit of understeer before. I kind of got a little bit of that feeling like I did in the GTR where at first it just wants to understeer because it has so much power and then it wants to oversteer. But I feel like this isn't the one that you're trying to drift on a track. No, right? it's definitely not. This is the one for like, just going fast normally on the way to work and no one noticing because it kind of blends in. Yeah, this isn't really a supercar, is it? No, we should probably do the supercar checklist. Is it fast? Is it loud? Yes to one of those really fast, but it's not really loud. Yeah, there's not much to the exhaust. It's pretty quiet. It crackles a little bit in sport mode. It's nothing nearly as insane as the GT cars. Yeah, you get a little bit of turbo spool in here, but that's pretty much it. Do the doors go up? Do you look cool getting in and out? The doors do not go up, but you do kind of look cool getting out, but not that cool. Look normal. Yeah, normal. Well, normal cool. Does it get a lot of attention? It definitely doesn't. And that's kind of the whole point of this car. Yes, like the people who know will know, and that's about it. Yeah. And does it have a gimmicky steering wheel? No, no not really. No, Pretty standard. Normal Porsche, which is gimmicky compared to everything else, but for Porsche, it's normal. And then does it fit a box? Let's find out. Box test. Shout out to all of our box test members on patreon.com slash the straight pipes. Let's find out if it fits a box. Oh man, it fits. Supercar fail. So it fit one box, which is bad because it's too practical. Now how about the visor test? Now let's find out. Three, two, one. Fail, fail, which is supercar pass. And then the cup holder, it has one that is actually really cool and convenient. So I think that's a fail there. But the problem is the grips are really tight. And if you have like a half filled coffee, it'll just launch it out. But there is also a second cup holder. Okay, so <laughs> is this a supercar? No, it's not a supercar. But if there was a category for a sleeper supercar, I think this would be top of the list. For sure. We gave the GT2 RS a supercar pass. The GT3 RS was not a supercar. But the Speedster, which is kind of a GT3, is the superest car that the manual transmission, but not a supercar. Yes. So there you go. Write it down. <laughs> so obviously this thing handles really well. We haven't touched on the looks or the interior yet, but I'm gonna let you do that when you drive. Should that be right now? Yes. Should I floor you into it? Obviously. Oh my, the back end feels like it kind of wants to just lift the front. This car's fast. Okay, send it. Oh. oh my god. <laughs> I actually closed my eyes for the first time on a launch. I didn't even make a face there. <laughs> and if you're one of the people who started watching us when we were doing the virtual reviews, this is what you can expect for the rest of the channel's life. So if you like it, please consider subscribing. 911 Turbo S. One million soon. So I'm gonna dial this down to normal so we can talk about the looks. Okay, let's start with the front end. Looks like a turbo. They basically put big vents everywhere down low. Yeah, it looks really cool. It looks like kind of every other Porsche, which kind of sucks. They haven't made like a cool GT3 style bumper where everything's on an angle, but it does look cooler than the 911 Carrera 4S. Yeah, and it looks like kind of the previous generation turbo because all they do is add big vents and kind of square everything off a little bit. Then if we look at the headlight, we've got the Excite headlights, which are like the X style, but when you have your full headlights on, the middle is on and it looks like X's, just like that one Panamera we drove, so I would always keep this headlights on. And then we mentioned that transforming front lip earlier. It does say 911 Turbo S on it, which is a really nice little detail. And then our DRLs are little lines left and right, which is cool. This is a Euro spec version. That's why we've got the Euro spec plate holder. This thing's getting sent right back there when we're done with it. Yeah, so this actually got shipped off to California where we were supposed to attend the launch of the Turbo S at Laguna Seca. So we would have been driving this on Laguna Seca. But 
In the meantime, we were able to have Super GT on YouTube teach us how to drive Laguna Seca fast in a 911 RSR. So yeah, I'll take that, that was good. Fair enough. So yeah, like you said, this is a Euro spec and another little Euro spec detail is that the side markers are clear. Whereas in North America, we always have amber, which kind of sucks. These ones are so much better. And you know that I don't mind amber and I prefer the 996 911s with the amber headlights because I'm a sick and twisted human being. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> and then if we move on to the side view, we got big intakes behind the door. Yeah, they are a turbo trademark. We got a super wide body and kind of the same stuff that we've been seeing on GT cars. And then we've got some really nice big wheels on here with carbon ceramic brakes that have yellow brake calipers. Yes, yeah, so the carbon ceramics are standard on the Turbo S, obviously, and we do have these massive wheels and I really like them. We got 20s in the front and 21s in the back. But I will say I do like the previous gen GT3 RS wheels a whole lot more, but what is the Continental recommended tire? The Continental Sport Contact 6. And we don't have a GT in this generation yet because that typically comes later in the generation, but let's get to the back end. The big wing. Massive, and you can actually hide it and it's not that massive. Yeah, it's a pretty good design because we still get that traditional turbo S big wing look, but when it tucks away, it's barely noticeable. But when it sticks up, it looks really good except for one angle which is really low it kind of looks like a porsche wearing a top hat yeah but in every other angle i think it looks incredible and this is probably my favorite transforming wing except the transforming one from the panamera that looks really cool yeah they did a perfect job on the wing and then if we move lower down to the exhaust tips we've got double dual exhaust yeah and they're squared off and this does not have the sport exhaust hence why it's not that loud. So on the sport exhaust, you get these big oval tips. Yes, but on this one, you get the Mercedes AMG tips. Yes, and behind that, you get the circular exhaust. So they're kind of fake tips. Yeah, well, they're fully fake. It looks good for far away. <laughs> yeah, and then we have on the side, because this is the wide body, we have these massive openings and it looks so good, so aggressive from the back. So overall, looks wise, this being a turbo, did they nail it or what? Well, turbo S, because turbo. there is no turbo. Turbo S, my bad. I think they nailed it, absolutely nailed it. It looks amazing. Like. They didn't shy away from the traditional 911 thing, so they didn't go way too crazy in the looks department, so they just did a good job of bringing the turbo thing to the 992 generation. Yeah, knocked it out of the park completely, but personally, looks-wise, I'm still a fan of everything GT looking. Oh yeah, of the previous generation, for sure, me too. It's just, we're kind of GT guys rather than <laughs> turbo guys. Yeah, I feel like turbo is for rich, successful people who don't need to show off their wealth and want to be sneakily fast. And we're still just want like a loud Lamborghini looking kind of bright green GT2 RS kind of thing. Pretty much, but floor for me. Jeez. <laughs> so that was out of normal. There was a whole bunch of lag, but if I'm in normal and I push the boost button. So that's the sport response button. And then we also have five different drive modes. Shift down. <laughs> There we go. So we have wet, normal, sport, sport plus, and individual. Should I sport plus through cliche corner? Yes, you absolutely should. Oh, wow, so much grip through here. I feel like I have so much control for being in just one lane. Like I don't need to use the whole road. I can do whatever I want just in this lane. Well, you should be in this lane at all times, I'm but just, yes. I'm just saying, you have so much more control. It doesn't like push you out or anything. Yeah, you don't feel like you need to cut corners. Exactly. And I obviously haven't had a chance to take this through the corkscrew at Laguna Seca, and I don't think I ever will. Hopefully Hopefully one day I'll get to drive something else through there, but I think I would have been like pretty decent through there. It would have been pretty fun. I, I have a feeling we would have been led by a previous gen GT car. That's my guess. Yeah. And they would have been way faster than us because every instructor is a professional driver and they are <laughs> faster than us. So then to end off the driving before I get into the interior stuff, this only has a PDK, no manual transmission. That's right. It's a lot of fun to shift. It's very responsive, but I just had way more fun driving the Speedster, which was manual. So like, I would aim for some Porsche that is a manual version. Yeah, if you can, but I mean, this isn't targeted at that type of demographic. Exactly. Totally different. But you said finish with driving stuff. I have a couple things to add. The steering, obviously amazing, traditional Porsche stuff, no complaints. It's, it's actually like the best. And then the driving position is also incredible. It's the best, they just nail everything. They do, except let's get to these gauges because I don't think they nailed them for a couple reasons. Same reason that we complained because this is the 992 generation. You can't see the outside two dials because they're blocked by the steering wheel. Yeah, there's a lot going on with the digital screens. They didn't really like map it out that great. But lucky for us, we still have the analog tack in the middle. But unlucky for us, it's the new 992 style version, which is a lot harder to read. It looks prettier. It's got more graphics and stuff, but nothing is better than 
the last gen black with an orange needle and white letters. That's the most perfect way to read your tag. And if you guys probably noticed, we weren't actually manually shifting this during launches because you kind of can't. You basically just have to leave this in full auto. And then when you're looking for your tack, like that seven red line is so hard to see. But it is cool that we have the nicer digital numbers at the bottom and then we can still see our speed. But I still feel like everything was easier to read in the last gen. And I just feel like it had more of a race car look and this is more of a polished look. Yeah, this is definitely more polished. This looks way more upscale, but my biggest issue is that I can't see my boost gauge because it's in the right dial where my fuel gauge is. Where your, your, your right hand should be the whole time. Yeah, exactly. So then if I look over and I cock my head over, no. Yeah, it's, I just, it's probably a bad driving position for a car with this much power. Very. And moving on to the infotainment, pretty much exactly the same as our 911 review because this is pretty much all the same car. And it obviously does not have Android Auto, but it does have Apple CarPlay. Yes, but I feel like the Taycan we drove had an Apple CarPlay that was a lot bigger and easier to use where this has the kind of Porsche Apple CarPlay where the icons are really small and they don't take full advantage of the screen. So I am disappointed. And then if you go to your car settings, that's where you can drop your spoiler or raise it manually. Yes, and I really like that they let you kind of do it wherever, not like F-types where it's like you can't raise the spoiler unless you're cleaning it. Like this is like full out, yeah, stick it up, man, anytime you want. You want that cool little lip to fold in and out? Sure, man, you paid for it. Yeah, I've been parking this thing with the wing up at all times. And then below that, we've got our little bronze shaver shifter, which looked totally lame in Bad Boys 3 when I saw it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, whatever. But in Bad Boys 3, they were also using a Euro spec 911 because it did have like the speed limiters with the red circle around it. Yeah, and overall, I've gotten used to this shifter. I mean, it looks kind of funny, but functional-wise, I have no issues with it anymore. Yeah, everything works fine. It's good. There's no buttons on the side. It's just gloss black, which is kind of cool that we don't see like fake buttons below it. And then the rest of our buttons here are pretty easy to use. The vents are manual vents. I love that. I love that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Such a relief. Yeah, do not make vents through infotainments like Tesla and everyone in the Taycan Well, doing. yeah, exactly. I know, I know. For I those know. cars from Porsche, I can get it. For the 911, just keep it more like old school. And then this one only has heated seats, but you can option cooled seats for about a thousand bucks. So then we do also have the clock at the top, obviously with the timer and the time. And then we have a leather stitch dash. We got carbon fiber in some places. This is a traditional 911 dash, traditional 911 interior. Everything looks and feels really nice, pretty upscale. This shade of red for the interior really matches the subtle looks of the outside and it being silver. And you can get a full red interior for zero dollar charge as well, like including the steering wheel. Zero dollars. Yeah, I know. That's a pretty good deal considering how much this costs. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and then we also have seats in the back. They're obviously not really meant for sitting in, but you can fold it down so you can fit more stuff too. And we already said that the driving position was perfect and that kind of goes hand in hand with the seats feeling perfect as well. Yeah. You can adjust basically everything you want, your butt bolsters, your side bolsters, your lumbar, love these seats. Yeah, except this car would be totally different with those carbon fiber buckets from the GT cars, which would not be a turbo S thing to do at all. Exactly, hence why they're not even an option. So with all that out of the way, we should probably get to the price. Okay, obviously it's a lot of money. Starts at $231,700. Holy crap, Canadian. And this one does not have many options, sitting at $241,540. That's like, really expensive, but considering what we said it competes with at the very beginning of this review, that's in line with everything. Exactly, except the Lambo. Yeah, <laughs> but I feel like you're paying extra for the flashiness there. Yeah, and then also if you add in like Aston Martins and stuff like that, which this would technically compete with because they are GT cars, but this is like the most sport car GT car. Yes, if GT car means subtlety and comfort. It does. Okay, Yeah. 100%. Like you, you could drive this to a racetrack, drive this at the racetrack, and drive it across the country and back to your office, and you would be just as comfortable in all those scenarios. So now if we compare the Turbo S to the GT cars, like, how do you feel? What would you rather have? Porsche GT cars, not like Grand Touring cars. Yes. I would obviously have a previous gen GT3 until they come out with the new gen GT3. I don't think I can restrain myself enough in a GT3 RS model, so I would restrain myself by getting the GT3 manual. I would go with a Speedster, which is technically a GT3, I think. If you're lucky enough to get your hands on that. Well, I'm a YouTube influencer, <laughs> so I feel like I could, you know, pull yeah, a yeah. few things into my Automotive head. journalist. I don't think that works for Porsche. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Maybe if you're Chris Harris or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anyways, I just feel like I'm more of a GT car guy, but I think it's because I'm a younger dude who's trying to be flashy and have fun, where this is more of a 
established professional who wants to have the best version that's not painful. The CEO of a bank. So then would you take this 911 Turbo S over any of the competition? I would probably take a lot of those over this because I am not the target demographic for this. I would 100% take an AMG GTR for this, but I will say that this is the best all around car between all of those cars. I think I would take this over an F-Type SVR and a Nissan GTR, but I wouldn't take it over an AMG GTR, an R8 or a Huracan Evo. So let us know in the comments what you would take this over. Do you think this is the best all around car in this class? Or check out this video of the Speedster. It doesn't really sound like much though. No, no.